Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about branches in Git. Um, so you might remember from the previous videos, um, there were several places where uh, Git was providing us information in the standard output, and it mentioned something about a branch called master. And I told you not to worry about that. We didn't know uh, anything about branches yet. So now we're going to talk about what branches are and how to use them. Um, one thing I'd like to point out here is that um, you're probably relatively new to using Git if you're watching this video. And you can get a long ways in Git without actually explicitly using branches. And so you might not actually use branches like we're going to be doing here um, very often. Um, but I still want you to learn what they are. Uh, and a big reason for that is because by learning to use branches, we can actually learn quite a bit about how Git is working behind the scenes and hopefully gain a little intuition about um, what Git is doing. And that can help us down the road if we run into um, trouble. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and get started and play around with, what, uh, play around with branches in Git. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to download um, a little bit of content here. So go ahead and um, if you have this open, if you have the slides open, go ahead and copy this command. Remember not to copy the dollar sign at the very beginning. So I'm going to paste that over here. And just to show you, um, in case you took a break between videos, I am um, in that repository that we started in the last video. So you just want to make sure that you're there um, before you start up again. So just make sure that that's wherever you started that first repo that we worked on in the last video, make sure you're in that directory and you can run git status and confirm that everything is, is you know, how we left it um, in the last video. Now we're going to paste in uh, this command. If you aren't at this video, I'll uh, give you a little bit of time to type this out. So it's just curl. Um, dash lowercase o space aubb.html. So this is a file that we're going to create on our computer. And we're going to create that by downloading this file from http colon slash slash phyletica.org slash slides slash git dash intro slash aubb.html. So we're just going to download a file. It just has a little, a little bit of HTML code in it. And we're going to use that uh, to play around with, with branches with Git. OK, so hopefully that will work for you. And after this runs, you should be able to type ls and see that there is now a new file um, in your directory. All right, so now what we're going to do is go ahead and add this new file um, to our um, to our repository. Okay. So before I do that, I'm just going to open this up. So you probably want to open this. Um, well, I'll, I'll just I'll just use cat here. So the cat is just going to print the contents of this file to standard output, just so we can just take a peek inside and and see what we're working with here. And here it is. It's just a very short little bit of HTML code a little dummy website that we're going to um, work on um, to uh, learn about using uh, branches in Git. OK, so what we're going to do now is remember the, remember the sort of workflow that we were getting used to in the last video. We sort of work on files in our working directory. We just did that. We created this new file. Uh, we can add that to the staging area with git add. And then the name of the file. And then we can, um, and I, I told you in the workflow that you can also always type git status and git diff just to make sure things are what you expect them to be. And sure enough, um, we have a new file and it's, it's ready to be committed. It's in the staging area. Okay. And now we're actually going to commit it to the database. Um, so this is how I recommend that you do this, but um, I'm going to go ahead and use this dash M flag just to speed things up. Um, but remember in the last video, I encourage you to, to not do this, to actually just type git commit and then use your text editor to write a nice detailed um, description of your um, 
uh, commits. <clears throat> but we're going to try to keep things moving a little bit faster here. Okay, so we've committed that to our database. Um, and, and one other thing that I want to uh, point out here, um, but I, I didn't mention last time, is when we type git commit, um, one of the most common uh, mistakes I see people making is they want to specify a file, okay? But that's not, um, if we think about the world view that Git has, that doesn't actually make sense. So when we, uh, when we want to specify a file, that's when we're adding the contents of that file to the staging area. All Git commit does is commit what's, er, what's already in the staging area to the database. It's not going to commit stuff in your working directory. So it doesn't actually make sense to say git commit and then a file in your working directory because that would be trying to skip the staging area, okay? But that is a common um, um, mistake that people make when they do git commit, they wanna use the file name, but you don't do that. You just use that for git add. When you type git commit, you don't need um, the file name. Okay, just a, uh, one thing I wanted to point out that I forgot to mention last time. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do git log, and now we can see that we have more stuff, right? So here was our, our first commit. Above that is when we added a new line to that first file, and now we have a third uh, snapshot of our working directory um, in the database, uh, and that's here where we're adding that new file. So now we're gonna learn a new command and that's git branch. So if you just type git branch with nothing else, what it's gonna show you is what branch you're on, okay? So when you're working in git, you're almost always on sort of on a branch, um, even if you didn't know it, okay? This asterisk here is saying, yes, we are on the master branch, okay? And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means in a bit. So when we only have one branch, it's called master, and that's the branch that we are currently on. And we're actually gonna draw this out in just a bit, but let's, let's get a little bit more interesting stuff going on first. So now we're gonna create three new branches. And we do that by just typing git branch and then the name of a branch that we wanna commit. Okay, so I'm gonna create a branch uh, cosmetic. I'm gonna create a branch programs. I'm gonna create a branch uh, concise, okay? So by doing that, we created three new branches. Now, if we type git branch, it'll show that there are three new branches, concise, cosmetic, and programs, but you notice this asterisk is showing us that we are still on the master branch. So we haven't actually, we created three new branches, but we haven't changed to them. We're still on the master branch. Okay, and so right now, uh, before we go any further, I'm gonna start to draw out what's going on here. So I remember early on, I told you that um, what Git is doing in the background is it's actually uh, sort of the, the keeper of this graphical database. And so now we're gonna actually talk about what it's doing with that graphical database. Okay, so I'm gonna just pull up git log here so I can actually write some stuff down. And another thing I'm gonna point out, I'm gonna start using these SHAs, these, um, these checksums basically, which are the IDs for the commits. Um, yours are gonna be different and that's actually um, good. Uh, every commit um, identifier, these SHAs should be unique. So yours will look different. Even if you had the exact same file contents, your metadata is still different and so you'll get a different SHA. You're guaranteed to get a unique one for every commit. Okay, so let me pull up a place where I can write a little bit. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit, give us a little bit more room. And so right here, this is where we currently are. Um, this, this is the commit, this is our most recent commit in the database. Okay, so I'm just going to write over here um, just the first uh, couple of, of letters of that SHA. I'm not gonna write up the whole thing. <laughs> um, okay, 
So this is the snapshot of all the contents that are in our directory that we are using Git to version control. Okay. Um, and what a snapshot is, it's just the, uh, it is a snapshot of the contents of, of what we're version controlling. And what it does is it points to the previous commit. So it's pointing to its parent, which in this case was this commit here, the next most recent commit. So D86 for me, like I said, these are gonna be different on your computer. Okay. So every snapshot that, um, that Git makes um, has a pointer that's pointing to its parent commit, um, sort of the, the previous commit that it was based on. Okay, so we, we made modifications from this commit to make this one, and so this one's pointing at its parent. Okay, so a little bit about these branches. So how this looked before we, we created new branches is like this. So all branches are, are pointers. They point to commits or snapshots, okay? And there's this other pointer that we'll um, start to see in a bit called head. That's where we are. So we have, pointers at, we have pointers pointing at pointers. Here is the actual sort of entry in our database, the snapshot in our database. A branch is pointing to that. And this head is pointing to whatever branch we are on. So when I told you up here that we are on the master branch, what that means is that head is pointing at the master branch, which is then pointing at our current snapshot of the database. Okay. So let me scroll back up. When we did uh, these three commands and created these three new branches, all that did is just create three new pointers. Um, that are pointing at this same snapshot that the master branch was pointing at. So there's concise. There is cosmetic. And there is, um, what's the other one? Programs. Okay, so that's all it did. It just created three new pointers um, and they're all pointing to the same um, snapshot of our, of our database. Doesn't seem very useful right now, right? <laughs> we have you know, four pointers pointing at the same thing and then a head pointer that's showing us where we are. Okay, but that's where we are right now. That's what our sort of database looks like. Um, and, and, and then this obviously is going back. So these pointers will point back all the way to the, the original commit, the very first commit of the, of the database. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is switch to, the, switch to the cosmetic branch. Okay, and we do that by using this command, git checkout cosmetic. Okay. So now if we do that, and then we type git branch, it'll confirm that this asterisk is saying we are now on the cosmetic branch. Okay, so what happened? Well, what happened is that all, this, all that command did, git checkout cosmetic, just moved that header pointer, that head pointer to here, okay? So that's all it did, just saying that we are no longer on branch, we are now on cosmetic. We just move that head pointer. Okay. So now we're going to actually edit um, the, that, H, that HTML um, code that we downloaded. So um, I recommend, um, well, actually, uh, before we edit it, let's actually open it with a web browser. So. Um, there's various ways you could probably do this on your system, but you just want to open that aubb.html file with a web browser, if you want to. I'm going to do it here so you can just, you, you could just watch what I'm doing. This isn't important for you necessarily to follow along with. Okay, so here it is. So I just opened, um, uh, oops. So 
so it is uh, missing at the moment. Let me try to refresh that quickly. A little bit of technical difficulties here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Sorry about that. Let me pull this up and make it a little bit bigger. All right. So here's the contents of that HTML code that we downloaded as it, as it would be rendered in a, in a web browser. Okay. So now we're going to edit that, edit the contents of that. Um, and we're going to use this as our guide for doing this. Let me pull that off, put that back. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit the HTML code a little bit, and I'm showing you what we're going to do here. The first thing we're going to do is to the body element, we're going to add this style flag to change the font of the website. So feel free to just go ahead and copy that. I'm going to use um, the text editor Vim to do this. Um, if you're not comfortable with Vim, I highly recommend you use a different text editor. You can use any text editor that you want. Um, Nano is a good choice uh, for, a, for a very simple text editor that's almost guaranteed to be on your system. Okay, so I'm just going to open aubb.html with my text editor. I'm going to come down here to this um, body element, and I'm going to paste in that style uh, tag there which is gonna update the font of the website. And then I'm also gonna change the color of the header. So this is the header of, on the website. I'm gonna change its font color to red. Okay, paste that in there and then put the closing of that element in there. Okay, so um, we're just updating the font and updating the color of the header. Okay, so once you've done that, you can use this as your guide um, to do it. We just wanna save it and close it. And what we're gonna do is say, get status saying, yep, we're on branch, we're on branch cosmetic. Um, cause we switched to that branch. It's saying there's nothing in the staging area yet. There's nothing in the staging area that's ready to commit, but it does see that this file has been modified. Okay. And we can use get diff to show us what's been modified, right? It's showing us that these two lines have been modified. This is what there was, and this is what there is now. Okay. And that's what we expect to see. Um, I'm just going to show you quickly that if I go ahead and refresh this file in my browser, it's showing the changes, right? The header is red and the, the font is Comic Sans. All right. So things are looking up here. Things are working. So now we're going to stage um, our changes. We're going to add aubb.html to the staging area. So, so far, our, our modification to the contents of this file are only on our working directory. This command is going to put those changes in the staging area for the next commit. Okay. And let's just ask Git what it thinks about the current situation. It's confirming I'm still on the cosmetic branch. And now it's saying there are changes ready to be, ready to be committed with the next commit and the changes are in the aubb.html file. Okay, excellent. So now we're gonna go ahead and commit those changes. Okay. There we go. So now let's switch branches, okay? So now I'm gonna check out Actually, before we do that, let me do git log. You can see that there is this new commit here. Okay, and I'm going to show you what happened in the database when we made that commit. OK, 
Okay, so we are on this cosmetic branch here. So I'm just going to erase this to create some room. So that's the branch we were on. When we um, made that commit, what's the E31? That created a new snapshot. All right, so every time we commit, we get a full snapshot of all everything that we're tracking in this directory with Git. Okay, um, and our pointer, our branch, just moved along with it. Right, so let me put that back on here. It's cosmetic. Is the branch, and we are on cosmetic. So the head is still pointing at cosmetic. So this was pointed here. But what, what Git did when we ran that Git commit is it created a new shot, snapshot um, and just um, pointed the cosmetic header at that new snapshot, okay? So this is, a, um, this is what I meant early on when I talked about Git being a graphical database in the background. Okay, let's go back here. So now I just ran, um, so I'm just going to confirm what branch I'm on. I'm still on Cosmetic, so I haven't done this yet. So Git Checkout Programs. Okay. So what did that, that do in terms of the sort of database? All that did was just move head, right? So when I do Git Checkout, what happens is head moved from Cosmetic and it's now pointed at the program branch. Okay, so think about that. Now we're pointed at this program branch, which is pointed at this commit. So think about what that means and what you expect to see in terms of the file content. All right, so are the cosmetic changes still there? Why? Okay, so let's go, let me refresh my browser. Huh, All right, so the red header and the Comic Sans uh, font are gone now. Okay, so what happened? Then I can actually, um, you know, look inside the aubb.html file and confirm that that body tag and that header um, red font color are not gone. So why is that? Well, this tells us why. So when we moved where we are, we moved head to here, um, we are now pointed to this snapshot. So we are now at this, whatever the files are like in this snapshot of the database, that is what how, that's how things should look in our working directory. And that's exactly what we see. So that makes sense that those changes disappeared when we did git checkout. Okay, so now we're gonna make um, some more changes here. Let me clear, they give us an uh, empty palette. So now I'm just gonna confirm that I'm on that programs branch, and I didn't forget to do the Git checkout. Um, we're gonna do some more editing. So what we're gonna do on this branch is bold the name of programs, okay? So I'm gonna, bold, I'm gonna make the bow tie bold font, and I'm gonna make Git uh, bold font. So once again, open um, aubb.html with your preferred text editor. Um, and see, we're gonna do this to Git. We're gonna make this bold. And bow tie is another. So we're just, um, you know, you can think of these different branches as different people working on this uh, website. Um, and, you know, one person wanted to change the font and the header color and another person wanted the program names in the schedule uh, to be bold font. So they're, they're making a different change to the website. Okay. All right, so once you've um, made uh, those two words uh, bold font, you can just save and quit. We can do get status. Um, we're now on the programs branch and there are changes, but they're not staged for commit. Um, okay, so we can do git diff and it's going to show us um, 
what has happened. So here are the lines that we edited and we can see that we now have bold fonts where previously we didn't. Okay, so now we're gonna add those changes to the staging area. So we modified this file. Those modifications are only in our working directory. Git add is gonna move those, this new content in this file, these changes to the staging area. Okay, just run git status again. Sure enough, it now says that these modifications, these changes, this new content are ready to be committed. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and commit them. Okay. okay, so let's take a peek at the git log. You'll notice that the um, that we don't even see the entry for the previous commit we made when we changed the font and made the header red. Um, the reason for that is we're, we were on this, um, well, let's actually draw it out. I think this will be more intuitive here. All right, so what happened when we made that commit? Well, the same thing that happened um, last time, we get a new snapshot. Um, and I'm just looking at my SHA for it as E3B. And now the programs branch is pointing at that new snapshot uh, and we are on the program branch, which is what it means when head is pointed to it. Okay, so you notice that we don't even see, um, let me use my arrow, we don't even see this commit right now. And that's because git log by default um, puts your, your most recent snapshot up top and then just works back towards the root of the graph that graphical database. So it's gonna show you this commit, then this commit, and then this commit, okay? So that's why we don't see that one right now, but it's still there. Um, we'll see that in a moment. Um, and having these branches makes it really easy to get back here. Because we basically have a flagpole sort of stuck in this commit, uh, in this commit, and in this one. And that's what, you can think of these branches as sort of sticking a flagpole in a particular snapshot of our database. <clears throat> Saying, we've been here and we're gonna put this flag here so we know how to get back. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna check out the next branch. But before we do that, I just wanna take a look at how things look. So we're gonna update, I'm gonna pre uh, refresh my browser. Sure enough, we can see that we have bold face here, but we don't have the other changes that are in the other branch. Okay. Okay, let's jump back here. Now let's go ahead and switch our branches again. So now we're going to switch to concise. So git check out concise. Let's keep our little diagram up to date. Remember what that's doing is we're just moving where we are, which is where that head is pointing to. So that's just changing from programs. Now it's pointing at concise. Okay. All right. All right. So now let's just take a look at our at our website. And you'll see that none of the changes we've made so far are there. Okay, why? Well, let's look back at this. Um, we are now on the concise branch and that concise branch is um, pointing to this original um, snapshot. So we don't see the changes that are on these snapshots because we're in a different part of the database, the, graph, the graphical database. Okay, so that's why we don't see the changes that are here. We're not there right now, we're here. Okay. So now we're going to make some more edits. So once again, just open the aubb.html file with your preferred text editor. Um, and what this person is doing, and obviously it's still us, but we can, like I said, you can think of these different branches as different people working on this 
um, database is they're going to make the, the content a little bit more concise. They're deleting stuff and they're deleting interminable um, from the Git intro in seminar, even if it might seem very interminable right now. <laughs> okay, all right, so stuff we want to get rid of. So this this person's thinking this is way too verbose. Let's tighten things up here. Okay, so just gonna make those changes. Once you've deleted those two words, just um, go ahead and save and quit out of your text editor. Okay, so do get status. Showing, um, not surprisingly, that we're on the concise branch and there are edits in this, there are changes to this file that aren't staged for commit. So now we're gonna um, move the changes that we've made, that new content to the staging area. And that's what add, git add does. Just to get used to this, git status again, confirms that those modifications are now ready to be committed with the next commit. And let's go ahead and commit them. Okay. Okay, so now what we're gonna start to do, oh, and before we do this, let's let's keep our little uh, cartoon of our database up to date. So what happened when we did what we just did, okay? So the same thing that's happened previously, right? So um, what's happened is, and I'm gonna write, do this a little bit differently. Well, I guess not, I already deleted that. Okay, so what's happened is we have a new commit now. That's here, so mine's, uh, the SHA for mine starts with um, 0D3. So I'll just write that here. And just to sort of point out, when I'm erasing the branches, that's actually not happening in the database, I'm just doing that to make room. Um, for the new content that I have to write down. Okay, so we're still, on, and we are still on this uh, concise branch. So what happened is a new snapshot was created that points to its parent, which was the previous snapshot it was based on. And whatever branch we are on moves with that update. So now instead of concise pointing at that original uh, commit, it is pointed at the new commit. Okay, so that's what our that's what our database looks like, um, um, sort of hidden away from us by Git. Okay, so let's go back here. So now what we're going to do is Git check out um, master. Okay, and let's just run Git branch. That's confirming that what we've done here is we've just moved back to our master branch. Okay, so let's go ahead and show what happened. We moved back to this master branch. So it's just mo moving where we are, where that head pointer is. Okay, so you should be able to predict now what you think are the contents of our files look like, right? So if we update this, and if we cat that, HDU, that, that HTML code, it looks like it did when we first downloaded it. None of the changes we've made are present, right? And that makes sense because we are now at that original snapshot when we created this file, um, but we haven't, it doesn't have any of the modifications that we've made. Okay. Okay, so now what we're gonna do let me clear some of this stuff out, is we are going to, um, so let me just do git branch again so we can see that we're on the master branch. Now we're gonna, you're gonna learn a new git command, git merge cosmetic. Okay, so what that is gonna do, it's gonna merge any new content, um, any new, any of the modifications that are in cosmetic into the master branch, okay? So git merge cosmetic is saying, I want 
anything different that's in cosmetic on that in the snapshot that cosmetic is pointed to. I want to merge that into my current snapshot, the one that master is currently pointing to. Okay. And I'll show this in the on the database in just a second. Okay, so it's saying updating, uh, fast forward, one file changed, two insertions, two deletions. Okay, let's take a look at what's happened to our file. So we merged in cosmetic, and now we see those changes that we made on the cosmetic branch, okay? So let's take a look at that database and think about what happened in terms of uh, the database. Okay, so we were right here, right? And what we said is, I want to merge any new content that's in this uh, cosmetic branch into my current snapshot, which was this one here, because we were on the master branch, okay? So think about that. So since this snapshot is a direct descendant from this one, think about the easiest way to do that you know, update this snapshot. So it, um, it, it merges in any changes that are here, okay? So it turns out the easiest way to do this is to actually not do anything to the database at all. The reason for that is because this snapshot is a direct descendant from this one. So the only difference between these two is just the new content that's here, okay? So to get a new, so if we want all of the content that's sort of present in both of these, all we have to do is go to this snapshot because that's got everything that was in the snapshot and a little bit more. So we don't actually have to do anything to the database. All Git did is just say, ah, I know what I can do to, to merge the content of those two snapshots. All I have to do is just change where master is pointed and the head is gonna go along with it, okay? So that's all it did. It didn't actually have to update the database at all. It just said, oh, you're here and you want um, to sort of merge the contents of these two snapshots. You wanna merge any updates from this one into this one. Well, that's actually easy because this is a direct descendant from your current snapshot. So all I have to do is move the pointer and you'll be happy. This is what you're asking me to do. Okay, so that's what Git is doing in the background. And that's what's called a fast forward. So whenever you do a merge and you're merging from a snapshot that is a descendant, a direct descendant from your current snapshot, um, Git is just gonna do a fast forward. And what that fast forward means, it's just moving the pointer. It doesn't actually modify the database at all. It just has to move the pointer. All right, yeah, so we've already looked at the HTML code and we talked about what's happening. Okay, let's make this more interesting. So now let's just make sure, where are we? We're still on the master branch. That makes sense, right? Because that's where we are. And now what we're gonna do is say git merge programs. What we're gonna say is we are currently here I want to merge in, uh, I want to merge into this commit anything new that's over here. Okay, so I'm saying git merge any new content that's over here. Okay, I want to mer basically merge these two commits together. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Huh. Well, look at that. So it's, it's done something. It's opened up um, the text editor where I'm supposed to give a commit message, right? And the reason for that is it's making a new commit to the database, okay? And it's giving you a little default message. It's saying merge pro branch programs, okay? So let's think about this a little bit. Um, let's go back over here when we say we're here and we wanna merge the content of our current snapshot with this other snapshot that programs is pointed to. What Git is looking at these 
And it's saying, okay, well, this is not a direct descendant of this or vice versa. I can't do a fast forward. There is content in here that's not over here. And there's content here that's not over here. So the only way to merge the, the content together is to create a new snapshot, right? Merging the content in both of these snapshots. There's never been a, um, a snapshot of the database that has had both of that content. So we need a new entry to the database to contain both of those modifications. Okay, so let's finish this. So I'm just gonna keep that default message that it, that it gave me. But as I said, when you really start using Git, you wanna use informative commit messages. Um, so do as I say, not as I do. Okay, so it's saying merge made by recursive strategy um, and it's made some modifications. Okay, so when we did that, what happened? So what happened was, see if I can erase this without erasing my flag. And let me do a git log so I know what my SHA is. There's gonna be a new commit, a new snapshot, because there has to be. Um, so here it is, the merge commit is 3.1b on my computer. Just let me write that in, 3.1b. So I've created a new snapshot and it has two parents. That original um, snapshot that master was pointed to and the snapshot that programs is pointing to, okay? Since there was um, new content in both snapshots, we had to create a new entry into the database, a new snapshot that had elements from both of these. And so that's why we needed a new commit so now master is now pointed at this new commit and that's where we are still. Uh, and it has two parents because it is bringing in new content from both of those snapshots. Okay, and so that's what our database looks like now. And let's just take a quick peek at our website. Ah, so now we have the Comic Sans font, the red header, that was, in the, that was changes we made in the cosmetic branch. And we see um, uh, um, the programs modifications where we bolded the names of the programs, Bowtie and Git. So, that, so this version of our website never existed before in our website. We had, a we had the uh, Comic Sans and red header over here and we had the bold um, program names over here, but we had to create a new snapshot to contain both of those, okay? Okay. Okay, so now we know what happened and why. So this combination of the code never existed before, so we needed a new snapshot in our database. Okay, so next, what we're gonna do is get merge concise. And before I hit enter, let me bring up the database again. So we are right now here. What I'm saying is, is now I want to merge in anything that's different over here. So I wanna merge content here and the content of my current snapshot. I wanna merge these changes into here. Okay, let's see what happens. Hmm auto merging conflict, merge conflict, automatic merge failed, six conflicts and then commit the result. Huh, that's weird, conflicts, why? Okay, so let's think about this. So let's go back here. So here, um, what are the differences between here and here? Right, so there's the um, Comic Sans red header and the bold program names over here. Over here, we deleted a couple of, of words over here. Okay, and so what's happened is to merge, um, we're gonna have to create a new snapshot again, right? Because there is no version of our database that has both of the elements that are in these two snapshots. So we're gonna need a new snapshot, but 
Uh, Git doesn't know what to do because the same lines of code were modified in both of these snapshots. And so it doesn't know which one to use, okay? So let's take a look at this. Okay, well, let's, I don't have it on the slide, so let's open this up. So then, so go ahead and open aubb.html after you've made this commit, this merge of concise. Open aubb.html with your text editor. And you're gonna see that Git has sort of flagged a problem. Not a problem, but something that we need to take care of that Git cannot, okay? And so what this is showing us is that um, there is um, our current, um, where we are, the current content of our snapshot has this here, these lines. And the snapshot that we're trying to merge into our current snapshot has this content, okay? And what we'll notice here is that, um, this line, we bolded bow tie, you know, one person bolded bow tie, but another person uh, deleted stuff. So Git um, can't decide what to do here, and it shouldn't decide, because it doesn't know um, whose changes should take priority. You know, should the bolded, should we, should we keep the bolded, um, should we keep the bolded bow tie with stuff? Um, or do we unbold bow tie and delete stuff? Um, Git is just a program. It's not going to try to decide that for us. That is it. Um, this requires a human to make this decision, right? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to, oh, okay. So I see what happened here. You know, two different people or the same person at different times modified the exact same line in different ways. So I have to decide what I want to do here. I'm gonna go, okay, well, I like this extra, the conciseness of this, but I also like the bold bow tie. So I'm gonna change the line to actually keep elements of both. I'm gonna delete stuff and keep bow tie uh, bolded. Okay, so now I'm gonna scroll down and also see the same thing is true for this line here. Here, someone bolded Git, but kept interminable. Here, someone didn't bold Git, but deleted interminable. Okay, so now a human has to decide what to do. We could keep one or the other, or we could do something new. So I'm going to do something new like I did above. I like the concision of getting rid of interminable, but I want to keep the bold Git. Okay, so I've modified manually those two lines that Git didn't know what to do with, okay? And now what I have to do is just sort of um, clean up. Um, so Git duplicated these lines for us, okay? And it, wrote, and it stuck this um, stuff in here for us. This string of less than signs head, that's the flag that's telling us this is how your snapshot is, where you are currently and then separates the duplicates with these equal signs, and then shows us with the greater signs, this is what's on the other branch. You as a human have to tell me what to do. Um, the same lines were edited in both branches. Um, I'm not gonna make this call. This is a call for a human to make. Okay, so what we're gonna do is since um, I resolve the conflicts here, right, I kept the bolded bow tie, but I got rid of stuff, and I kept the bolded git, but got rid of interminable. These are the lines I want to keep now. So I'm going to delete everything else, including that stuff that git stuck in there for us. So git didn't intend us to keep that stuff. It's just sticking it in our files to sort of point us to where the conflict is so that we can go in, easily find it, um, and resolve it. <clears throat> okay, so now I can just go ahead and save and quit. Okay, so now after we've um, 
resolved those conflicts that get flagged for us. And so this, just one thing I want to point out, this isn't a weakness of Git. This is a feature, right? If it finds um, changes to the same, two different changes to the same line, we don't want Git to try to pick one. We want Git to tell us that and let us decide how we want to merge those different contents on that same line. So if, if there are differences on different lines, um, Git is smart about that. It can merge those together automatically. Um, but if it sees um, changes to content that are on the same line, it's gonna go, whoa, I don't know what to do here. A human has to intervene. Okay, so now let's just do a quick Git status. It's saying there's unmerged paths and it's showing that we have modifications to aubb.html. So we've gone in here and we've, um, we've resolved the conflicts that were in here. So now what we wanna do is do add that rep, the, the new content um, to the staging area and then go ahead and commit it. Okay, so let's update our database. So what happened here? Well, so this is where we were, right? And this is where we wanted to, to merge from, okay? But the database needed a new entry to be able to do that. Um, Okay, so there's my SHA 0F1. So I'm just gonna write this over here since we're getting a little bit cluttered. So it created a new snapshot that also has two parents. It's got some elements that were in this snapshot and it's got some elements that were from that snapshot. And now whenever we make a new commit, whatever branch we're on moves sort of along with that uh, commit. So we just created a new snapshot and it's got elements. Um, the only, so it's, it's exactly the same as what happened here. But here the changes were on different lines. And so Git could merge that automatically for us. The same thing happened here. It's just that we had changes on the same lines. And so Git could not automatically uh, merge the content it had to get our input on sort of the best way to merge the differences that were between these two snapshots. And that's why we had to go in and manually sort of resolve those conflicts. So all Git will do in that case is sort of flag, say, I don't know what to do here. I'm not gonna do this merge until you do something, but I'm gonna um, put some, I'm gonna add some flags some content to your file so that you can easily find where the conflicts are. Okay. All right. So one thing I'm gonna show you here quickly. So this is git log. Um, it's showing you, um, let's, let's just take a quick look at this and, and compare it to, um, our database. And so when I do, um, sorry, let me just, whoops, oops, let me just clear up and just do git log again. Okay, so what is it showing us here? It's showing uh, at the top is our most recent commit. It's showing that it's a merge of these two commits. And you'll see that both of these get listed um, after this one. So um, it lists them in sort of order, so it doesn't know which one to put first, but it doesn't really matter. So the parents of this one are listed next, and then the parents of these next set of parents are listed, um, and then this parent's listed, and then this one, and so back. So it's, it's basically just going to follow all of these paths from our current snapshot back to the root and show us the information about all of those commits. Okay. 
Um, so one thing that I want to show you quickly is, if you remember from that very first video when we were um, configuring Git, I showed you how to make an alias. Okay, and the alias that we made was called Git DAG. Okay, um, let me actually just show you what that looked like. I'm just going to look inside my git config file. And so when we told it to use an alias, we said, whenever we type DAG, we want you to replace DAG with git log one line graph decorate. Okay. So now what we can do is now just type in git DAG. It's basically just going to be a fancy git log. It's going to be the same as git log, but with a bunch of options. Okay. And what it's doing is it's just fancifying the git log to actually show the graph, the graphical database. Okay, so this, my very ugly <laughs> graph that I drew over here is identical to this over here. Okay, so this is just showing you that there are some bells and whistles that you can add to git log. And rather than typing this out every time you wanna do it, why not make a quick and easy alias git dag. And I use dag because dag stands for a directed acyclic graph. And that's what this is here. This is a directed acyclic graph. It's a representation of our database. Okay. All right, that's the end of um, this section. Quickly before we take a break, let's go ahead and travel um, in time. So if we go ahead and just do git log again, I'm gonna go ahead and get the, I'm gonna get the SHA for our very first commit. And I just need the first seven characters or so. You don't actually need the whole thing. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that. That's the, that's the SHA, the ID for our very first commit, okay? So git log, scroll all the way to the bottom, and get the first seven or so characters of that, of that ID associated with our very first commit. And then what we're gonna do is use git checkout. Um, so first of all, let's just take, do git status, confirm everything's clean and git branch. So we're still on the master branch. So things are like this. So we are here, we're on the master branch, head is where we are, okay? But now what I'm gonna do is git checkout and I'm gonna paste in that ID, the first seven or so characters of the ID for the very first commit we made for this project, okay? And what's happening is it's saying switching to this, which is the ID, and you are in a detached head state, okay? I'll tell you what that means in just a second, but first let's have a look around. Oh no, what happened to our aubb.html file? It's gone. And dummy.txt only has three lines instead of four. Like, oh no, like our files disappeared. So this is gonna freak you out the first time that you do this. Cause um, if you've made a lot of changes um, and you know, added new files and stuff, they all disappear. And it's kind of scary, right? But fear not, Git has you covered, right? So now if we get checkout master, And then we look, ah, everything's back, right? So aubb.html is there, um, dummy.txt has that fourth line. So everything is just back the way we left it. So I just wanted to show you that because um, it's really cool that you can travel in time to any version that you want of your database. Um, and, but don't be alarmed when files disappear and things like that. Git has you covered. It's got that information in the database. It's just, um, updating your working directory to match what was what the database looked like at that time. And so if, if the aubb.html file wasn't there, it'll take it away. But if you go back, check out master, it'll return. So let me show you what happened when we did that. So we were here, um, check out works exactly the same. So what we did this wasn't the very first commit, but let's just pretend like it was. All that git checkout did was this. It just said, okay, he wants head to point to this commit. Okay, and that's what it did. And so when it said that we were in a de detached head state, 
That sounds pretty gruesome, um, but that's what that means, is that head normally points to a, a, a branch, but by doing git checkout and then giving the SHA specifically the ID for a commit, you're actually telling it to point head directly at a snapshot instead of pointing it at a pointer. And so it's just kind of warning you that um, I'll do that for you, but just keep in mind that you're actually not on a branch right now. And so if you make changes, it's, it's hard to keep track of them if you're not on a branch. Okay. And then when we ran git checkout master, all that did was just move head back. So nothing in our database changed. We just changed where we were in the database. Okay. And let me show you one more trick before we end this video. And that is, okay, so it's going to confirm that we're on the master branch. So we're back over where we started. So instead of doing um, git checkout and then just the SHA, what you can do is git checkout dash B, um, and I'm just going to make up a name here, um, new branch. Okay. Um, obviously, if you're actually doing real work, you might have a more informative title. But by adding this option dash B, it'll switch. It'll do two things. It'll say, okay, I'm gonna create a new branch and I'm gonna point it at this commit. And the new branch is called new branch. And then I will point the head at that new branch. And so I don't get that uh, um, detached, that that gory detached head uh, warning that I got before because I created a new branch um, that head can point to. <clears throat> so I'm still pointing to the branch and so Git's not gonna warn me about that. So you can use the Git checkout SHA and skip making a new branch. If you know you just wanna kind of, you know, look around and see what the things were like back here. But if you think, um, you know, I might want to actually make changes and start a new branch from back here, and then do the dash B option because then you're going to be on a new branch and you can make uh, modifications and be able to easily get back to them. Okay. You won't be in that de detached head state. All right. So we just learned uh, how to use branches, but more importantly, because like I said, you probably won't use branches that often, um, when you're first using Git, you can get a long way without actually explicitly using them. But more importantly, we learned sort of how Git works. What is it doing in the background? And by having this sort of this, this, this concept of this graphical database, it really helps us understand the messages that Git is telling us. And if we run into a snag, it helps us, gives us better intuition on how to resolve uh, a problem. Okay. Okay, so we learned Git, we learned branches, and we learned how to time travel using Git. Our next video is going to uh, cover um, what are called remotes, so remote copies of our repository. Um, and so that, that'll introduce a couple more commands, and I think you'll be fully sort of up and running on how to use Git.